Hi, it's uh, Michelle Donahue with Artworks Risen Canada. Just um, about to start a cheese board here. I've mixed my resin uh, four minutes. It's cold, so it's a bit bubbly, but that's okay. On these surfaces, it's easy to torch that out um, using Artworks Resin. It's a top coating resin, and it has no VOCs. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, and it has... Um, Pals and UV protection, and it has a 30 to 40 minute work time. The, the pot life, that basically doesn't mean it's guaranteed. If you leave it sitting in a cup, you're going to lose your pot life, but I'll explain that uh, more in another video. Um, today, I just want to try to keep the video short. I like to do short videos. I'm not super experienced with YouTube. I don't use it a lot, but I'm trying to learn more about it. So bear with me if I uh, make some YouTube errors, errors I am learning, and I will try to uh, correct them as I go. So one thing I want everyone to know is when you're working with any epoxy resin, you should use nitrile gloves, uh, not vinyl, not latex, or, or um, rubber. The other ones are not chemical resistant, nitrile is. If you have an allergy to it, you can always put a different glove underneath the nitrile, but the nitrile is the one that you should be using when working with epoxy resins. I'm going to do um, a larger cheese board and a smaller cheese board or serving board, I guess they could also be called. I get a lot of requests for pinks and I don't do a lot of pinks, so I'm going to do today some white and pink with a bit of silver. Um, maybe kind of a, these two will have similar colors. They could be a matching set, gift set for someone. Um, Mother's Day is coming up, so I thought I would do the pinks. So I mixed a little bit. Uh, the resin's already mixed there. Sorry, I'm just. I decided to leave the pigment so I could show you how little you use. Uh, I've already taken out the mother of pearl for this one, and the next color that I'm going to show you is the frosty pink. These are Larez Expressions colors. So. You really need very little. That's all I'm putting in that cup. And there is a ton of powder in there. So these last forever, unless you use them every day. <laughs> the next one is Stardust. It's the Larez Expressions Special Shimmery Effects Powder. And it is really pretty. Loads of sparkles in there. And again, this one I'm going to put just a tiny bit more because of where I'm going to use it. But again, it's very little. And I've had that one probably, oh, about six months. This one here is called Starburst. And it's an epoxy paste, where there is. I uh, haven't used this one a lot. It does need to be stirred. Anytime you deal with epoxy pastes, they should be stirred before you take some out. So I typically scrape it off after I stir, and then I'll just pick up maybe about that much, very little again. Um, the next color, oops, knocking things over here. The next color I'm going to use is the Larez Angel White, and I apologize, you can barely see the words. This one I use a ton of. Uh, the Angel White does beautiful things in resin work, including ocean pieces. It is great for lacing and waves, so give it a bit of a stir. I see I have a little bit of blue in there, probably from my last ocean piece. Um, again, you don't need very much. This is a really tiny stick, so... If I was using a popsicle stick uh, like this, it would just be the end of a stick, but these are half the size, so they're even uh, picking up less. I'll use them. So this is something I wanted to show you. With the, This is the molten silver. So a lot of times with epoxy pastes, um, they solidify in our warmer weather. So what you can do is just use a heat gun to warm it up a bit and stir it. You're gonna to wanna to turn your volume down for this, the heat gun will be loud. So I'm just gonna stir, warm it up. Okay. 
just a few minutes because you don't want to you don't want to um, melt the plastic container it's in so you just do about 10 seconds stir it again and it's uh, it's quite a common thing for epoxy paste to solidify in uh, I don't imagine they do so much in the warmer climates like Australia unless they're having really cold days but here in Canada it's snowing outside sorry it's snowing outside in Canada today and it's very cold here right now so I'm just going to do the top layer to save on time but if I was doing a bunch I would actually try to do the whole part again I'm just going to scrape off the back so there's nothing on the back that's all I'm using in there All right, so I'm going to put my resin. There's one other thing I wanted to show you. These are German glitter glass. I carry it at Artworks Resin in the store. It is beautiful. I love the bling and the sparkle. I'm going to put that, um, I might have to add a bit more, but as a trim on the end. So this is the Starburst. Sorry, Starburst is here. That one was Starburst and Stardust. The powder was the Stardust, the paste was the Starburst. This is the Mother of Pearl. It's a really pretty pink and the Frosty Pink. It's a little bit brighter, but very pretty. And the Angel White and the Molten Silver. I'm going to need more in that one, but I'll do that after. So the Molten Silver, I like to, when I'm using a paste, take it and scrape it off on the edge of the cup and pick it up and stir it in again. And you may want to do that just a couple of times to make sure that your paste is really well mixed in there. And I'm going to do the same again with the white. Take it and stir it and pull it off. <laughs> I've made way too much resin here so I'm gonna to have to grab some maybe coaster molds and I'll put the resin that's left over that I don't use into the coaster molds or I have these little heart molds that I also use when I have leftover resin. They can make magnets or they can make um, great um, keychains I haven't done but a lot of people like to make keychains with their leftover resin that they have and Sorry, I'll just see. I have another piece over here and I did better to pick up something before it cures. Um, I'm just doing the angel white. The uh, leftover resin, the other thing I sometimes do is I'll have a, a few panels red, ready, uh, hard panels. I don't use canvas, but they're like a canvas for wall art. And I like to if I have leftover resin, I'll just pour it over the hard panel so that it can uh, be a base for another layer. Let it uh, cure and uh, have a nice base for the next layer. If you use canvas for your wall art, you definitely need to back uh, support the back of the canvas because it will pull in the middle. That's why I mainly like to use the um, hard panels, the birch wood panels. You can get them really at most art, art stores, art supply stores. And online, there's a variety of art supply stores now that are selling online. Thanks to our, our pandemic, a lot of people have moved that way. I had considered carrying them, but uh, I have a fair amount already at Artworks Risen, so I, I decided that I have a lot. I'll kind of maybe stay in my lane with what I already have. 
Same with molds. I get requests for molds a lot, and we have a lot of wonderful mold makers in uh, the world, Canada, North America, and so I like to support them. They, uh, they need our support too, so I try to support local as much as possible. Um, so if you can. So that doesn't look as sparkly once it's in the resin, but when I put it on and it dries, it will be again. So I'm going to maybe take on this one. I'm going to give myself a lot of space here. <laughs> now this is um, actually quite transparent. So when it's transparent, you can add more color if you want it to be a little deeper. So I am going to do that just because the wood will show through on this. If um, What I could do is put my white down first. So I'll do that. And go over the edges because you want it to cover your wood uh, on the sides. I pick it up off the surface after as well, but that'll, I'll push that off after. So this is the molten gold, and I'm just gonna pour a little bit over top of the white there and beside it here. And this is the frosty pink. So I added a bit more and now it's more opaque. So I can now put that beside the white in between the silver. This is not staying in this pattern, by the way. Sometimes I do leave the, the pattern and sometimes I don't. Today I'm going to use heat gun and I'm actually going to, oh, which one was the powder? This one was the powder. That needs to get stuck. I just wanna make sure that I know where I'm putting the next. So the mother of pearl is quite light and I'm just going to put it over top and I think what I might do is go ahead and do a bit of the manipulating first so I spread the white out some more. Just need some more white on there. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to turn your volume down for this next part. So I'm going to use the heat gun. Move the cups so that they don't uh, go line when I do this. So sometimes I'll just do really nice lines and then I'll torch it and leave it. Today I'm actually going to manipulate the colors over each other. It gives a nice uh, soft effect. Um, I'll do another one another time where I can leave the colors. But... Oops, sorry, I should have torched quick. Again, you're going to want to turn your volume down.
going to take that um, German glitter glass. I do need a bit more. Or don't I? It's a bit lumpy there, so I need to add a bit more so that I can pour it out a little bit easier. I'll be putting more on here as well. Still a bit lumpy. Actually, before I do, I should show you one other thing that people often like to do. Sometimes um, people like to get that a ribbon effect and you can either pour different colors together in a cup or you can pick up your leftovers and you can also very carefully drizzle. I don't have a big enough um, popsicle stick to get the really good ribbon effect but you you'll drizzle it over and then because you've got the different colors on there you'll get a bit of a what they call ribboning from the different colors and it's actually quite pretty if I have these are such soft colors it's not showing as well but if I had brighter more vibrant colors it would show the ribboning I'll try on this side and see if I can get maybe a lighter stick but see it up close but you probably can't see it. I'll do it again on another one with darker. Sorry I should have warned you to turn that down. So now I'm going to take the um, German glitter glass. It should, should pour a little easier now I think. I don't want it too runny or it'll spread very very far. I just want to use it as a bit of a trim here. So again, go right off the end so that it goes off your piece and it keeps it even down the sides. I'll use the rest of this on another piece. And this is a very light, light piece. I'm just going to grab a bit more of the white now. If you have wood that is porous, you will need to prime it first. I find the maple and some of the uh, black walnut that I use doesn't need to be primed, but if I'm using the live edge, I find it off, awfully dry. And I find the live edge actually does need to be primed a lot, a lot more. So what I'm doing, I did the, the um, maneuvering first. It gives it a little bit of depth and a little bit of different. You'll see as we add more. And I will now pour that part out. Again, right over the end. You don't want it to stop and then just be a big bubble at one end. Really soft colors, this one. Okay. Okay. Add a 
get more of the silver on again. That's the molten silver. And the stardust. This one goes on almost clear so after I torch it it's basically just going to add sparkles as will the starburst. So this will be loaded with sparkles. I'm going to make this one a bit wider. And I'll go in with another pearl now. And this is going to really soften it up again. It's really such a soft, soft color. It's almost a two-tone color. It brings out really pretty pink. And then at an angle, you can see it almost pulls a purple. And my layering... Just giving it a lot of different um, elements there. I'll probably do another coat. Where is the other? And I'm just going to try to get some of this German glitter glass thinner now so I can put a little bit of it. Throughout as well. And it's so, so soft. I'm not used to working with such soft colors, but it is pretty. Okay, this is a really soft, delicate kind of piece. I'm going to pick up just a few spots there. This is where, actually, I should get the um, wider. I should stop, but I'm going to show you the, the ribboning I was talking about. So you pick it up. And you just kind of put it across, try and go here. I'm making it busier, but I wanted to see if I could show that ribbon effect. There, it's showing up there. So you see, 
I'll bring you in closer and do it on this one too. Thread it through both. Some people, they'll put it all in a cup and pour it that way to get that ribboning effect. But that also, this will also work just picking up the colors this way. They're blended and then they kind of spread out in that almost ribbon look. So a little bit more here. Okay, I will torch and leave it alone. I've gone on way too long. <laughs> Sorry, turn the volume down. might need to pick up some uh, with a gloved finger and tap any on the sides that it might be missed. I'm going to bring you down so you can try to see that ribboning I was talking about. So, right, you can see the ribboning how that gives kind of a really neat effect. So I will show these pieces again tomorrow. They're quite pretty, very soft. And I'll be back uh, when they're cured to show you the finished pieces.